beautiful fresh tuna, an array of market vegetables, and I'm gonna bring some heat from my harissa sauce. This is the kind of salad that I can, even I can get into it. Now, I'm cooking in a wood oven today, so I've got some cast iron cookware I'm using today because the oven is nice and hot. I grabbed these Lacrosse ones from Meyer on a weekend cause perfect for this dish. What I need to start with is actually chilies. Now, ancho chilies, they've got this chocolatey, smoky kind of aroma and in a harissa sauce, it's absolutely perfect. Coahuila chilies as well, we're using here as well. These are also dried. On top of that, I've got some citrus. Now my harissa, I want it to be citrusy. So I'm adding some blood orange peel because they're in season right now. I've got some beautiful citrus lemon peel there going in. And I've also got ruby grapefruit peel, again, in season. So we're gonna get that in. You'll also see I've got a pot on here already. That's got boiling water in it. That is in there ready to receive the chilies because the chilies need to begin to sort of cook down a little bit. They're gonna take 20 minutes once they've been roasted off. I've also got this guy here. Little pot, beautiful. And we'll, what we're gonna start doing is cooking the beginning of the harissa sauce. So, tomato paste, a little bit of oil in there first. Some tomato paste, lemon juice, ruby grapefruit juice, and blood orange. Preserved lemon, just roughly chopped up. That can go in there. Some raw sugar. Again, straight in. And some smoked ground paprika. So I'm just gonna give this a bit of a shugle. So I'm gonna get this and it's just gonna live right there. I'm gonna put a lid on it and it's just gonna gently tick away. Okay, so we've got some nice burnished color in our chilies, you can see. So we're just gonna put them into our water. A Little bit of blackening around the edges of the chilies. The color changing in the water as I mix these now. So we'll just pop these back in really for one minute. Literally. All right, have a look at that. So you can see we've still got plenty of beautiful rich color, but you can also see they're just sort of dried any more than that. And you're gonna to create too much bitterness. This is gonna be pretty tough to get rid of. We're gonna stick the lid on this and we're gonna give that about 15 minutes to 20 minutes just to simmer and let those chilies go nice and soft. Two things, one, spices. Harissa wouldn't be harissa without some cumin, some caraway and some coriander seeds. Same thing again, we want the oils and the flavors and the aromas to start moving around. And I'm gonna do that in a little pan here, straight into the wood oven and let them get toasty toasty. Beautiful. Then in the same pan that we did the chilies in, I'm gonna now get a selection of the vegetables. So, so I'm doing some great, some beautiful yellow French beans, some green beans. I'm gonna do some runner beans. Peppers, or we'll call these banana peppers. I want one to go in the harissa. Extra one of those. What else are we gonna have? An aeroplane. Keep an eye on our spices. Help! <laughs> chili. One long red chili, that can go in whole. Some oil, just to cover it. Some pepper, all over. And plenty of salt. Let's get these little baby guys in here. Little selection. Look at the color of these, aren't they beautiful? The beauty of this is you just load up a tray. Obviously you want something that can withstand the heat, but as they start coloring in the oven, you just pull them out one by one. Set them to the side, back into this bowl. We'll get all of them on and we'll do the beans after. Straight in the wood oven. Spices. See them starting to smoke there? Perfect, I'll just go them in time. Pestle and mortar, if you don't have one, please. Go and buy one. Let's have a little look at our peppers. Give them a little mix. Oh yeah, looking good. Perfect, they can go back in. In here, I have 
something luxurious, garlic. I just wrapped them in tin foil while the oven was heating up, right? When I put it on this morning, watch this. This is one of my favorite things. When you get garlic and you roast it in the oven and then you squeeze all of the roasted garlic out, look at that. A little bit of a mix mix, oh yeah. Now into there, we want to be adding our spices. You're pounding them up as fine as you can in a pestle and mortar before we add them to the beginning of this harissa base. All right. Spices in. Now it's starting to resemble harissa with the smell of the spices in there, along with the tomato. It's starting to turn that sort of burgundy color that we recognize in harissa. Peppers. And the beauty of the cast iron, you can see, I've turned that over, it's already started blistering on the other side. You don't get that with stoneware. So just turn them around, pop them back in. So our uh, harissa, again, I'm just gonna stick that in the door there and let it tick over. Let's have a look at our chilies. These have had about 15 minutes. <laughs> have a look at them. So what you're gonna do now is a little bit of work, okay? We're gonna grab our chilies one by one. We're gonna take the stock off, give them to the worms. Probably best practice just to let these cool on your board for a few minutes. Peppers, remember I want probably one of the big guys. So I'm gonna go with the capos and then I'm gonna get the rest of my veg on here. And then we just wanna blister them up in the oven and cook them nicely. Being a salad, I still want it to be a little bit crunchy. I don't want well done, sloppy veg. All right, with our capsicums that came out the oven, split them open and we'll remove as much of those seeds as we can. You don't have to be perfect. Now that we've got a bit of stuff cooled down here, what I wanna do is chop this up as fine as I can. This is laborious and I'm sure that in the edit suite they're just gonna fast forward me chopping lots of stuff for the next like probably 20 minutes. Enjoy that, won't you? These guys are beautiful. Still a bit of crunch in them. Delicious. After some intense Exercise, I've got all of this chopped. So just mix it all together and give it one last final chop through. This is intense in terms of aromas. And that's what we're looking for. I want my salad to be interesting. I want it to stand up for itself. You know, if I'm gonna be eating a salad, it'd wanna be a good one. But look at that, yum. Back to our harissa base, which is now looking very, very delicious. We'll stir around and see where we're at. It's fruity. Wow. Red wine vinegar. Get a slosh in there. All right, into our pan goes a chopped mix. Come on now. Come to me, Harissa. Let's have a little look at you. You'll start to see how beautiful it looks. What I now need is some salt, it desperately needs. And I'm gonna put the lid on and just continue cooking it so as it, the flavors just sort of start to settle a little bit. Lid on. Just inside the door. Now, the main event, the tuna. How are we gonna cook that? We get a trusty pan back. I'm gonna give my fire a bit of a, a razz up. What I'm looking for is a red hot fire to sear the tuna on, right? So two things, one, I've got to get this guy in and getting red hot. I'm gonna add a couple of smaller pieces of timber that will ignite really quickly and catch on fire. And I'm gonna shut the door. Pump up the heat, right? So we're gonna give that five minutes Similarly, as we did with the harissa sauce, we're just gonna take out the bulk of the seeds out of this banana capsicum and the other ones as well. We'll just cut them in half, roughly. 
same thing again here. These little baby guys have hardly got any seeds in them at all, so just give them a quick going over. So our chili, now, depending how hot you like it, for me, you know, I think everybody deserves a little pop of chili here and there. So I'm gonna slice it into half centimeter strips. So as everyone gets a little, little chili bomb. Okay, so they can go in there. Now I've got some broad beans as well. They can go in. And I've got some green olives. And these are just, they were kicking around the fridge, to be honest. So they go in. Now we've got some treviso. Now treviso is bitter. Yes, absolutely, 100%, it is bitter. Bitterness is gonna add complexity to the salad, so it's quite important. So some spinach, a little bit of parsley. Again, nothing precious going on here, just rip it up. Now, we've got a red hot griddle plate that is ready to receive our tuna, right? So, temperature wise, we can see it's kind of approaching sort of 300. That's great. I can't be pouring oil into a red hot cast iron pan in a pizza oven, otherwise I'm gonna have a fire in like three seconds. So, the smart person gets some oil and oil the fish on a board and season it. So, leaves your dry hand to do the seasoning. A lot of salt, tuna steaks. Oh yeah. So we can see the color, it's already started to go straight away. So we're gonna give this a quick, look at that. Oh yeah. What I do want to do now that I've turned them is get some of my harissa paste onto the fish. Look at that. Don't be shy on harissa. It is delicious. It's not too hot. It's really good. Stick them on your board. Again, you don't want the tuna to overcook. Now we're going to build it. Our salad. A little bit of red wine vinegar, some salt, some extra virgin olive oil, base dressing, right? It's already gonna be delicious. Get some of it and scatter it on your dish. We're gonna get our harissa, and we're just gonna drop little bombs of harissa paste into our salad as we go along, as we build it up. So now, next layer on top, hot. Oh. The smell, the smell, come on. Last of all, our delicious tuna can go on top. And there you go. And there it is. It's a tuna salad with a mix of fire and spice and fresh vegetables that will make anybody happy.